Please. <laughs> you know, I used to always, um, back when I was in high school, I had an English teacher. <clears throat> and I used to say to him, how's it going, uh, sir? And he used to say, oh, very slowly. <laughs> so it's not the usual expression that you, or the reply that you will expect. Um, but it, ha it happens to be that we were both walking. So yeah. I asked him, how's it going? He said, it's going slowly. <laughs> so yeah, I remember that, yeah. <clears throat> so um, how's everyone feeling today? I'm feeling fine. Good. Feeling good. Nothing. Uh -huh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We had a reply from everyone at the same time. So we have a new student, uh, Mila. She's joined us, uh, and she's from Moscow in Russia. Uh, so, Mila, is this your first lesson? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, um. because I didn't under understand uh, and uh, press um, show yesterday. Oh, I, 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 I could only um, hear you. Oh, what? so you not so. You have watched one of my lessons. Yes, I watched. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry, you'll get used to it. It's um, hopefully from now on you can join the lessons and be a part and and, um, and learn. So I'm, uh, I'm a little worried because I'm first time uh, with a native uh, tutor mm -hmm. online. No, nothing to be worried about. Everything's fine. Um, it's a great thing to be uh, speaking to a native, I, I presume, uh, especially if you're a student <laughs> of a language. Native people are normal, too. Sorry? Uh, <laughs> I mean, native English speakers are normal people, too. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think she's saying... You. <laughs> I think what Mila means is she's <clears throat> maybe... Um, because she's still learning and she hasn't uh, spent any time speaking to a native. Is this the very first time, uh, Mila, that you're speaking yeah, to an native? Yes, yes. I see. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, like I said, um, nothing to be worried about. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, I'm here to help you. And um, <clears throat> so let me welcome Dimitri. Hello, Dimitri. Nice to see you again. Hello, Alan. Nice to see you too. Welcome. And. Um, so, um, tell me, Dimitri, how was your day? Oh, it was a difficult day. A lot of work was. <laughs> Did you do a lot of programming? No. Mm, a lot of meeting. Oh, you had meetings. Oh, that's the best, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the most boring part of, uh, of any job, I think, are the meetings. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Andre, you can uh, concur. You agree with that? Yes, of course. <laughs> I yesterday also uh, post my lessons with you and other teachers because I had a meeting and I uh, couldn't reject it. And it was a little bit boring. Oh, for me. <laughs> shame, shame. Yeah. Yeah, but they have to be done, you know. Sometimes you have to attend meetings. Yes, of course. Especially if uh, it is uh, your friend or maybe colleague and you need to discuss something important on yeah. copy something, pirate software, for example, <laughs> and so on. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yeah, you're right, yeah. Or maybe the boss is calling you in for a meeting. You yeah, can't say, yeah. oh, sorry, I'm going to go and take my English class now. I can't come. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll be happy. <clears throat> so, Mila, tell us something about yourself. We'd like to get to know you a little bit. Um, we know you're from Moscow, from Russia. Um, mm -hmm. What do you do? Uh, I am retired. Okay. Uh, now, uh, and um, I, I worked in a custom service. And um, <clears throat> I have a, um, I'm married. I have I have a, uh, three children and three grandchildren. 
Very good. Wow. Uh, I have a, a big family. Nice. It's good to have a big family, isn't it? Are they all living in Moscow? Um, now I, I placed in area of Moscow mm -hmm. uh, because I have a country house. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. So you are um, maybe just outside of this, the, the center. Yeah? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so do you have any hobbies? Yes, of course. I, I like um, uh, mountain ski. I am diver. I have been in Australia in um, Great um, Reef. Great Barrier Reef? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm happy to hear that. I, I, I did diving there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you um, you like to dive. <clears throat> wow. Mm -hmm. I'm from Australia, and I still haven't been to the Great Barrier Reef. But you have. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, so tell us about your experience. Uh, you know, when you were in Australia. <clears throat> what did you like there? And how long did you stay there? Um, uh, um, um, do you... Um, uh, I? Yes, yes. Me? Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. Repeat it, please. I uh, didn't understand. I don't understand. Sh sure, no problem. How long did you stay in Australia? Ah, uh, for a week, uh, two two week, two week. I One see. week we had uh, a dive, and um, another week we um, visited um, Gold Beach, Gold Coast, Gold, Gold Coast. Coast, Gold yeah. Coast, Gold Coast, and um, uh, there we have um, had we had uh, a trip in bush. Oh, good. So you were in the bush. <laughs> in the bush, and we saw rainforest, rainforest, nice. yeah. and uh, the you know, beautiful landscape. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, was that your <clears throat> your only time that you were in Australia? Your first time? Yes, yes. Mm. Only one time and first time. <laughs> ah, hopefully you will go there again. You will visit Australia again. <laughs> um, I, I, um, we are going with my husband in Antarctica in December, in this December. Oh, wow. yes. Antarctica? Yeah, Ant Antarctica. Antarctica. I, I don't know in English, Antarctica. The the, yeah, the, Antarctica, the, yeah. The, South. It's no. South. 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 Yeah, South Pole. Pole. South. Yeah, South Pole. Yeah, it's South Pole. South. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I uh, I don't know what to say. I've never met anyone who has been there. Uh, I hope you have a great trip. Mm -hmm. And how long are you going to stay there? Mm -hmm. Will you be staying there for a week? No, no, three weeks. Three weeks? Wow, three amazing. Week. Uh, because it's a very um, user. Um, from Moscow. Further. Further. Uh, very far, you mean? Uh, very far. Very yes, far, yes, yeah. far. From Moscow, because um, our <clears throat> travel uh, will be uh, spent spend, huh? mm -hmm. uh, three week, week. Uh, so your whole vacation will be three weeks. Excellent. That's great. That uh, probably will be it's very. A, my my another hobby is travel, traveling. Uh, yeah, I like to travel as well. But I've been traveling too many times in my life. I need to slow down and settle down, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, okay, that's great, Mila. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. And um, you're most welcome well, to. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Okay, um, so before we start the lesson, um, I just want to explain what we are about to do.
um, since this is Mila's first lesson. So for this lesson, we are doing um, IELTS preparation. Okay, and this is a high intermediate to advanced level. Um, so the way we usually do it, we play. I play a video which is ten minutes uh, in length. And you watch that video and you take notes, okay? And after the 10 minutes are over, we discuss what we watched. So you tell me, or you summarize for me, what you have watched and what you have understood by the video. And after that, we go into detail um, about the topic of that episode. Okay, so um, hello, Lena. Lena has joined us. Nah, nice to see you. Okay, any questions before we begin? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's hit it. Let's go there. Okay, so here is the link. Uh, actually, I'm going to screen share so you can see it. There it is. Okay, so one thing I need, uh, need I need you to do is mute your microphones, so there is no background noise. <clears throat> there is a microphone uh, button at the very top of the video. If you can't find it, that's fine. I can I can mute you. <clears throat> yes, Rinat's got it. Without further ado, let's begin. Hello, I'm Margot Politis. Welcome to Study English, IELTS Preparation. Today we're going to look at the use of contractions in spoken English. A contraction is like a short form in speech. I've just used three examples. I'm for I am, where for we are, and I've for I have. English speakers often use contractions, so mastering them will help your speech improve. Our story today is about tourists helping scientists study whale sharks off the coast of Western Australia. Listen to this conversation and try to identify the contractions. So what sort of information are you recording in your log? Uh, the latitude and longitude, the depth, the time, the sex, and any um, sort of interaction that the swimmers have with it. The whale sharks don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them, and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here, we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do with that. The difference is, I suppose, with scientific research, you might have a research team here for a week, two weeks, and then they leave. They might come here once every few years. But when you've got, well, six or seven whale shark boats here and three or four in Coral Bay running for three or four months, then their contribution to research is awesome. They're out here every day. Did you hear the contractions? The first speaker used three of them. Simon said, don't, wasn't, and wouldn't. Listen again. The whale sharks don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them, and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here, we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do about them. Don't is a contraction of do not. Wasn't is a contraction of was not. Wouldn't is a contraction of would not. These are all examples of a very common style of contraction, a verb and the negative not. Now listen to a tour guide, Steve Gibson, talking about the tourists who help study the whale sharks. He uses another type of contraction. Can you identify it? The difference is, I suppose, with scientific research, you might have a research team here for a week, two weeks, and then they leave. They might come here once every few years. But when you've got, well, six or seven whale shark boats here and three or four in Coral Bay running for three or four months, then their contribution to research is awesome. They're out here every day. Steve says, you've got and they're out. 
These are contractions of pronouns with the verbs to have and to be. You've is a contraction of you have. There is a contraction of they are. We can also make contractions with nouns and other words. Let's look at a few. My brother's studying. Brothers is a contraction of brother is. Who's going out tonight? Whose is a contraction of who is. There's our bus. There's is a contraction of there is. When writing informally, for example in notes or postcards, it's fine to use contractions because they represent spoken language. However, if you are writing formally, do not use contractions. Remember that in formal writing, words that are not in the dictionary should not be used. Finally, let's consider the pronunciation of contractions. Some are stressed and others are not. But just remember, the rules for stressing words can change according to context. Here's a guide. Contractions are stressed when they're formed from nouns, main verbs, and negatives. For example, my brother's studying. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have. Contractions are not stressed when they're formed from pronouns and auxiliary words. For example, Steve says, when you've got boats here, they're out here every day. Notice that contractions cannot occur at the end of a sentence except for the contraction of a verb and not. For example, he's sick. Yes, I know he is. We cannot say, yes, I know he's. But we can say, I'm hurt. No, you aren't. Okay, now we're going to watch the story again. This time, listen for the use of nouns. So what sort of information are you recording in your log? Uh, the latitude and longitude, the depth, the time, the sex, and any um, sort of interaction that the swimmers have with it. The whale sharks don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them, and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here, we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do about them. The difference is, I suppose, with scientific research, you might have a research team here for a week, two weeks, and then they leave. They might come here once every few years. But when you've got, well, six or seven whale shark boats here and three or four in Coral Bay running for three or four months, then their contribution to research is awesome. They're out here every day. All the speakers use a number of nouns. In English, nouns are either countable or uncountable. That is, we can either count them or we can't. Let's look at countable nouns. Countable nouns are generally things like people, a teacher, a cook, a swimmer, animals, a dog, a cat, a whale shark, plants, a lily, a bush, a tree, objects, a chair, a table, a boat, units of measurement, a litre, a dollar, a cup. Uncountable nouns are generally more abstract and include things such as languages, Chinese, Japanese, German, emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, ideas, intelligence, luck, knowledge, substances or materials like air, oil or rice. Countable nouns have two forms. They can be singular or plural. But uncountable nouns have only one form and cannot form a plural. Let's have a look at that. Chair can be singular or plural. Chairs. It is a specific concrete thing, so it is a countable noun. We can say, I would like to buy three chairs. However, furniture is an abstract noun. It has only one form and cannot be made into a plural. 
it is an uncountable noun. We can say, I would like to buy all that furniture. Using a word like all indicates quantity or amount. Listen to how Simon Stevens measures knowledge in this clip. The Welsh Hearts don't actually seem to mind the interaction with them and certainly if it wasn't for them being out here we wouldn't have the amount of knowledge we do about them. He says an amount of knowledge. Knowledge is an uncountable noun. It can't be counted. We haven't got a specific number we can apply to define a quantity of knowledge. We use quantity words or measure words with uncountable nouns instead of numbers. We say an amount of knowledge, a cup of tea, a loaf of bread, a degree of happiness, a measure of luck, or a gust of wind. Okay, so today we've looked at different types of contractions and how they are stressed in phrases. And we looked at countable and uncountable nouns. If you would like to watch today's story again, look at some study notes or do some exercises, you can go to our website anytime. It's at abcasiapacific.com slash study English. That's all for today. I'll see you next time on Study English. Bye-bye. <coughs>
you can't say yes he's. Ah yes yes. Yeah. So you're supposed to say yes he is. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, the noise from us. Uh, can I mute him a little bit? Yeah. Uh, the next part was about nouns. The, there are two types of nouns, like countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Countable nouns is, uh, as the name it says, nouns which we can count. And uncountable nouns is, it is uh, nouns that we not always can count, or it is count which are frustrating. For example, the name it can be used. Well, uncountable nouns can be example language, emotions, ideas, and the sugar, water, ri rice, air. Uh, uncountable nouns can have singular and plural uh, kinds or views, types. Yeah. When we, yeah, forms. When we uh, want to give the uh, amount of uncountable words. Nouns. We have to use these major words like amount, cup, like cup of tea, loaf, loaf of bread, degree, and uh, like that things. Mm -hmm. Is that so? Very Thank good. You. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jonat. You've covered a great deal of the video. Okay, um, would anyone else like to share what they, or summarize it in your own words? Mila, would you like to try? Uh, your microphone is still muted. You might have to click on the microphone. It's at the very top of your video. So if you move the mouse, to the top, you will see like a little microphone and a camera mm -hmm. at the very top. Uh, excuse, excuse me, do you help me? Yes, yes, now we can hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, could you please question? Yeah, could, would you like to tell us what um, you understood by the video or maybe uh, summarize it in your own words? I um, understood um, the lesson um, about the uh, uh, Contraction, uh, the contractions words. Uh, it's a, um, a shorter form, a sh uh, shortened form of a word. Um, it, uh, verbs plus um, negative or, um, uh, for example, um, doesn't, wasn't, couldn't, wouldn't. And uh, so on, Thank and um, 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 I I have a much pronouns and uh, plus uh, uh, verb. Um, I have, I've, uh, you've, he uh, with um, uh, verb to be. I am uh, his, uh, you, you are, you are, you are, you are, good. you are, you are, and <clears throat> um, and um, another part of this lesson uh, was uh, about uh, counting and uncounting. Uh, pronouns. Uh, yeah, pronouns. Nouns. Pronouns. Nouns. Yeah. Nouns. <clears throat> uh, um, and uh, count, counted um, pronouns have have uh, two, four or two, um, four types, um, single or uh, plural. And uncounted, um, uh, only one type, uh, single. 
Good. And, um, uh, we um, can't. Uh, you, uh, we can't um, use the article with uncounting. Uh, un uncount uncountable. Uncountable uh, words. Counts. Much time. Uh, for example, uh, expression, uh, feeling, and, and another uh, uh, words uh, uh, which um, uh, describe uh, our feeling and uh, uh, okay okay that's great thank you very much yeah that's that's a lot for the first time you've covered quite a lot there thank, we love, thank, you. thank you very much that was good um, okay is anyone else uh, willing to summarize or give us their summary about the story uh -huh. The story describes scientists who explore shards and about uh, duration of uh, their research. Yes. Is it so? Okay, that's good, yeah. That's the story, that's what it was about. Okay, then. So, let's see if I can screen share the actual... Here is the PDF. <clears throat> contractions, yes? So let's look at these contractions. I'm sure you have studied this in the past, and um, but they are very common in English, especially informal English, uh, you know, spoken, like uh, Rinat was explaining earlier. So in spoken English, uh, we use a lot of contractions. All right. Um, writing as well as speaking, not just speaking. Now, how do we uh, identify contractions? Yeah. Uh, identify? Yeah. How, how identifying contractions? In written, we use uh, apostrophe. Mm -hmm. From this, we can identify. Excellent. What about spoken? Okay. We have to identify by the meaning. Yeah, so you have to be, um, you know, alert and attentive and just listen carefully to the sentence being spoken. Okay. I would be at one moment because of apostrophe not always uh, mean uh, means that it is contraction because it may be possessive uh, case and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, apostrophe can uh, indicate this situation. Very good. Yes, you're absolutely right, Andre. So, like even Margot Politis, the lady that was speaking, um, she said, sometimes it can be possessive. I think she said it, right? Maybe she didn't. But uh, it can be possessive or it can be contractual, like um, okay, Andre, give me an example. Uh, do you mean possessive situation? Yeah. Give me a sentence where... Okay. Uh, for example, it, uh, it's my son's car. Uh, first uh, sit, uh, first uh, uh, word, it's, it is a uh, contraction of uh, 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 pronoun and uh, verb, but uh, my son uh, describes situation uh, to whom uh, the car uh, belongs. Excellent, very good, very good. Okay, <clears throat> so not always apostrophe will mean contraction, yes. very good. Yes. So here's another study tip. Um, communicating effectively and naturally in English means using contractions in everyday conversational speech like I mentioned. It's also beneficial 
to put this into practice for the IELTS speaking test. So if you are planning to do this uh, this IELTS test, you you need to implement it implement it in your speaking test. <clears throat> Um, but in our writing text, we cannot use contraction in IELTS exam. I I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't use it in the writing. Uh, so yeah, it's prohibited. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because you pro you must have you've done it, so you you would know. Yeah. 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 So they're saying here as well, extending the use of contracted form to informal writing is important because it's common, correct, and natural for that style of writing. Okay, so let's have a look at these tables. <clears throat> so it can be a pronoun, noun, question word, or other, yeah, plus the auxiliary verb. They are traveling in China. The weather's cold. Where's the party? Here's the book. Okay, and you know all of these words. And then she won't be attending the meeting. John can't have the car tomorrow. This is when it's negative. Uh, Mila already mentioned that. That was good. <clears throat> so then we have irregular verbs. <clears throat> so look, let's look look at this list of contracted forms when it comes to irregular verbs. So on the left is the form. So we have present tense. Uh, first person singular, am, you know, that's very easy. Third person singular, is, becomes apostrophe s. Like here we have friends as a noun. Jacks. Yeah. Um, for example, who can give me a sentence with this contraction here? Let's see if you can get it right. My friend is. Yes, go ahead. My friend's doctor. <clears throat> My friend's a doctor. Ah, that's better. You see, if you don't use the article a, mm -hmm. it's a different meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it's possessive. This mm -hmm. is my friend's doctor. My friend's doctor. The doctor of my friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you say my friend's a doctor, ah, totally different sentence. My friend is a doctor. My Very name's good. Mila. My, my name's, name's Mila. Very good. My name's Mila. Mm -hmm. My name is Mila. <clears throat> um, okay, these are easy. Let's keep going. You are. Okay, so friends are, uh, sisters are, you know, it's not very common to see this, mm -hmm. okay, just, just so you let you know, just so you know. It's more common with, uh, let's say, second person, if you say you are, we are, they are. But if you put friend or friends are, apostrophe are, it's not very common to see this, but it's possible. Okay. Also um, here are. <laughs> also here are, yeah. Here are. I mean, not this is beautiful sound. Exactly. It's it's very, it's like a tongue twister. Yeah, it's not easy to pr pronounce. So here are, here are, you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's tough. What an artificial sound. Yeah, it's, uh, grammatically it's fine, it's correct. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, because it's difficult to pronounce, like Mila said, it's not used as often. Then we have past tense, first and third person, singular. Yeah, was, that stays the same, there are no contractions actually. Only if it's negative, I wasn't, she wasn't, uh, weren't. You weren't in class yesterday, what happened, for example? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Have? Let's have a look. So third person singular becomes has. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, somebody give me a sentence with this one. Uh, 
Противен? My friend has a car. Again, Dimitri? My friend has a car. My friend has a car, yes. My friend has a car. Mm, you want to say my friend has a car? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in contraction. Uh, my friend has a car. Let's move oh, out sorry. now. Uh, um, um, not now. Uh, только сейчас. Uh, only only now. two minutes oh, ago. No. Ah, yes. So let's say your friend arrived. How would you use this contraction? Mm. My friends worked for this company for five years. Okay, yeah. My friends worked, my friends worked, my friend has worked, mm -hmm. yeah. or my friends arrived. My friends arrived. Mm -hmm. See, if you now, if you don't see the writing of this, if you just listen to me, my friends arrived. You might think two or three or four friends arrived. Yes, it's but pretty. actually I'm saying my friend, one friend, has arrived. Yes. You see? It's just past perfect, oh, present perfect. Present yeah. perfect. My friend has arrived. Okay. Um, where, where's? Where has, really? No, where is, okay. Hmm. Or oh, negative would be hasn't. He hasn't compared. All right, let's keep going. Singular and plural, have, I've, you have. Uh, you can also say tables, tables of, sisters of, but like, like I said before, not common. It's not common to, to, to even speak this, let alone write it. Um, past tense, singular and plural, had, aha, uh -huh. I'd, okay, you'd, okay, somebody give me a sentence with any of these pronouns and the had contraction, so any of these co uh, pronouns. I had arrived. Uh, two seven o'clock yesterday. Yeah, I'd arrived yesterday. Yeah, at this time, at that time. Any others? I had been studying for one year in Finland. I'd been studying in Finland for one year. Yeah, good, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have who had, who'd, yeah? Mm -hmm. Who had done this? Who had done this? So, okay, let's keep it going. Do, there are no contractions with do, unless it's a negative contraction, doesn't, don't, didn't, and so on. Uh, will, ooh, very, very common. Okay, so to say, I'll, you'll, he'll, she'll, it'll, we'll, they'll, they'll come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Who'll win? Who'll win the match? Also pretty common, who'll win? Who will win? Who'll win? Okay. Uh, j uh, <laughs> For example, this name, Jimmel, Jimmel, mm, okay, you can say it. So Jim will do it tomorrow, or Jim will do it tomorrow. You can say that. Um, would. But like negative now. form, you, you hum it, won't. won't. Yeah, won't. won't. He won't. He will not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And would now is the same as had. Okay, that's the same contraction. Now again, you need to understand the sentence. What kind of sentence is it? Uh, what's the context and so on? 
I'd like to take coffee after Very my good. breakfast. Yeah. I wouldn't be in your place. Yeah, I w or I wouldn't like to be in your place. Yeah, if somebody is uh, maybe going through div divorce, mm -hmm. you would say, I wouldn't like to be in your place. Very good. Uh, we would, so we'd like. Um, it's very common, you know, when somebody's asking, what would you like, madam? And, you know, she's speaking on behalf of herself and her husband, so she might say, we'd like a cup of tea, please. We'd, we'd like. And also, they'd like. They'd like a double bedroom, for example. Okay, let's have a look. Now, here we have some differences. Okay, when it comes to Australian English, uh, North American, and British. The pronunciation of can't, can't, okay. So there's a slight difference. I'm sure you're aware of them already. Mm -hmm. Did you know of this contraction? Shan't. Shan't. Shan't means shall not. Shall not. Yeah. Uh, I think, Irina, we've learned it before, haven't we? Yes, yes, but this uh, modal verb is rarely used, actually, so... Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mustn't, it's common. Needn't, yeah, needn't. Oughtn't. Well as oughtn't. <laughs> oughtn't, yeah. Ought is like should. Yes. Uh, it's very... What it rarely used. Traditional, yeah, it's not mm. common anymore. People just say should. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you shouldn't do that instead of you oughtn't do that. Okay, and and a little summary of question of question and other words which are commonly contracted. What's what's this? Um, when's he coming? Uh, who's there? Uh, you know, where is he? How's it going? And so on. These are handy, handy to know as well. Um, and then the stress, you heard um, Margot Politis speak about the stress as well. Sorry, Dimitri, there's some noise coming from the background of your room or something. Okay, so the stress, they'll be, leave, uh, they'll be living in Thailand. The weather's been warm. How have you been? There has been a fire. Okay, so in spoken English, the following type of contraction is unstressed. These contractions are pronounced shorter and quicker, and therefore sometimes difficult to hear. It is an important aspect of casual conversational English. Okay, so I, I pronounce them so you can hear them. Um, yeah, like you heard Margot Polari say, is he upset? Yes, he is. Not, yes, he's. This is one thing where also Rinat was mentioning. Certain contractions you cannot have at the end. Okay, so that's pretty much it. There's maybe one more page about this. Uh, so we're running out of time, and I think we should do the activities. I will give you the link of this. Um, just a second. Uh, so you can download it and have it. Okay, here's the link for the study notes. And now, let us do the activities. Um, any questions? Any questions? Many? No. Or none? Okay. None. I thought uh, Mila said many. I have many questions. Okay, so here are. No, none of questions. Yeah, you can just say none. There are none. Or there are no questions. No questions. Excellent. So let's practice now. Form and write in the correct contraction using the infinitive verb in brackets. In, 
Anybody wants to start? The first start here. What should we do? Who wants to start? Okay, I can start. What should I do? Activity one. Yeah, did you form and write incorrect contraction using the infinite verb in brackets, okay? As you can see the streets streets can be filled with people celebrating the rugby win. I filled. No. I filled. Streets. Streets. Oh. Street. Ah, okay. So whoever whoever uh, reads the question, I want you to type the contraction in the chat. Okay. So, like Dimitri just said, as mm. you can see, the streets are filled. Okay. Excellent. So apostrophe R E. Very good. Thank you, Andre. So the streets are filled. Now, Rinat, can you read it again? And make sure the contraction is heard. We can hear your contraction. Okay, okay. As you can see, the streets are streets are filled with people celebrating the rugby win. Yeah, good. So I said mm -hmm. the streets are filled. The streets are filled. The streets are filled. Streets are filled. If you, you remember what I just read before, I you know showed you the activities um, in the study notes at the towards the end. Uh, the stress, you cannot hear it. It's not stressed. So you can barely hear the contraction. So if you listen to me, okay, as you can see, the streets are filled with people celebrating the rugby win. Did you hear the contraction? Practically, no. Yes. Exactly. You barely heard it. So it was very difficult. So the streets are filled. The streets are filled. That's her. It's you don't even hear the R. It's uh, like uh. The streets are filled. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the um, the secret behind the fluency of the contraction. So there's no stress, and it's very difficult to hear. Okay. Second one, Andre. Does she speak Mandarin? No, she doesn't. Very good. No, she doesn't. <laughs> This one is a bit easier. Okay, question three, uh, Lena. Uh, the, uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, the trial player on one second. Make louder your microphone. Mm, I'll try and do it. Mm. Okay, I've made it a bit louder. Mm, okay. Um, uh, their travel plans uh, wouldn't wouldn't be uh, delayed. Wouldn't no. Mm. Will oh, not. Won't be. Good. Mm. Well done. Mm. Can you type it, uh, Lena? Can you type it in the chat, please? Thank you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, won't be delayed. All right, good. Um, Ivan, number four. Uh, they put a deposit on the home, but the owner changed his mind about selling. Very good. Good pronunciation. Can you type it for me, please? Yeah. So they've put a deposit on the home. They've put a deposit on the home. Okay, very quick and no, no stress. Number five. Jane's not going to the party. Mm -hmm. Or Jane isn't going to the party. Okay, you can say Jane isn't going to the party or Jane's mm -hmm. not going to the party because very good. she isn't. Yeah. So both are correct. Jane's not going. Jane's not going to the party, or Jane isn't going to the party. But the more common would be to say Jane's not going. So Jane is not. So the contraction is Jane apostrophe s. Uh, Alan, please, uh, uh, one moment. Uh, in this case, when we use isn't or uh, is not, 
something uh, change, uh, changes in the meaning for native speakers or no, or uh, it's absolutely the same construction. Uh, I mean, uh, sense of uh, this uh, sentences. Mm. It's exact. There's no meaning, uh, no change in the meaning. It's not exactly change. the same. Okay. It it basically confirms that she will not be going. That she is not going to the party. But if we want uh, emphasize not uh -huh. going, uh, if we try to. Okay. Here, <laughs> all right. Here is the here is the trick, uh, or the secret. Let's say, it depends on the if there is a question. Mm -hmm. If somebody asks you, is Jane going to the party? And you want to emphasize the negative, what will you emphasize? So the question is, is Jane going to the party? Mm -hmm. You will say, no, she isn't. Mm -hmm. OK? Yeah. Now, yeah, so the emphasis can be like that. Now, if you want to say, um, Jane. Jane's not going to the party. It's pretty much the same. So actually, there is no difference. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's, if you want to put emphasis on it, you can put emphasis on either. So isn't or Jane's not going to the party. Mm -hmm. OK. Six. Mila? Do you say there will be a test tomorrow? Again, please. Uh, did you say there will be a test tomorrow? Good. How do you could you spell it for us? Do you have a or using an iPad maybe? Do you see the chat, Mila? On the right side of the video, the Hangouts. Is there a chat? A chat box. You probably don't know. That's fine. Okay. So did you say there'll be a test tomorrow? There'll be. Okay, good. Did you say that there will be a test tomorrow? Question seven. Rinat. The boys have gone. The boys have gone to the excursion. The boys. The boys have gone. Good. The excursion. The boys have gone to the excursion. The boys have gone to the excursion. Of of of. Okay. The boys have gone. Yeah. So, yeah, the boys of boys of boys of the boys have gone. The boys have gone to the excursion. What's excursion? Do we know what excursion is? Yes, excursion is like to go to mountains and uh, to go to excursion. <laughs> to go outside, yeah, play games or. It is the same word in Hiking. hiking. Ah, good, yes. Like a trip. Maybe the class is going out for a trip. Maybe look at uh, something. Yes, yeah. So maybe they're going outside to, you know, in the forest nearby, or they're going to the zoo, anything. Okay, an activity which is done uh, outside of school. Number eight, Andre. We missed the train because we slept in. Yes, we missed the train because we've slept in. We've, we've mm -hmm. slept in. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Number nine. Dimitri. And then mightn't go hiking because of the weather. Good. They mightn't go. They mightn't go hiking because of the weather. They might. Yes. Mightn't go. Mightn't go. Very good. And the last one, Lena? Uh, his uh, brothers are uh, fighting again. No, they're not. No, they? They're not. They're not. Ah, or they're they aren't. They aren't. Yeah, they aren't. Mm -hmm. yeah, they aren't. No, they aren't. Negative questions, yes. Yes. OK, excellent. Very good. All right, so there's, I think, Another activity here we can do, I think, in your spare time. And then hopefully we can go through it the next time. Please remind me to go through it because you know every time I do uh, these IELTS uh, lessons, there's always new students. I think of maybe Renat and Andre and Lena sometimes are the regular ones. So I'll give you the link 
mm -hmm. for the activities. I think there's one or two more to be done. There is the link. You can download it and practice and then check your answers. I believe there's yeah, yeah, activity three. Yeah, and then the answers. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any questions? No. All, all understood? All happy? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you very much for joining. Mila, nice to meet you. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to. To the next meeting. Okay, until next time. Uh, excuse mm -hmm. me. Uh, yes? I have a, I've, um, a <laughs> question. I've <laughs> a question. Um, can, um, what's your mean? What's your means? Uh, can I speak in in intermedia? Uh, in an intermediate level. Um, yes. As far as I mean, from this judging from this lesson, I think you can. You can participate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it should be okay. I mean, I don't have a problem if you joined my intermediate level. So you... uh, I, I would I'd, uh, like um, uh, to join in your lesson in, um, in tomorrow, after tomorrow. No problems, yes, you're most welcome. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, only, only intermediate levels, and uh, I'm afraid of, uh, um, could I... <laughs> speak in this lesson. It should be okay. You see, this lesson here was supposed to be a bit more advanced, so maybe you, you found it a little bit challenging for you, but you can join my intermediate lessons. Yeah, no problems. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm.